So I had this idea of making a very rudimentary operating system in 16-bit. And I don't know, rather than take the uh, blind, leading the blind approach, I figured I'd take the blind leading himself, I guess, approach and just kind of pencil sketch my way in, you know, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, 16-bit operating system, what's got that going to take? Uh, well, I probably know how to make about this much of it, really, and the rest is all just making it up as I go along. We know how to make a bootloader. Next thing we need to do is uh, get a keyboard driver going, I guess, huh? Uh, let's see, so I just kind of pencil sketched a very basic thing here, let's see what I got, that mimics the behavior of uh, uh, command prompt, you know, Commodore 64 style, you know, and I can just uh, type anything I want in there. Oh, unknown command. Yeah, that's what I remember. The days of the Commodore 64, for sure. Um, and that uh, supports caps, you know. Uh, uh, unknown. Okay. Uh, I could put in a known command. Nope. Uh, but if I enter uh, something it recognizes, it can return. Um, basically whatever I wanted to so there's that's kind of powerful uh, so uh, I can go over the essentials of the code there um, let's see we just run in a loop made a subroutine for reading the key um, and then uh, it's gonna when, uh, read it into a, a um, string as long as you keep typing, da, 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 uh, um, and then checking for that enter key, and then if you do, and then it'll go and uh, look what's in that string, uh -huh. and then call a little print routine, so it prints it all out to the teletype, and um, also um, storing that in a, a buffer. Yeah, uh -huh. there you go, that's the whole thing. Uh, let's see, so here, let's go down to the bottom here for starters, da, ta, ta, you know, so there, make, you can define your command prompt, it can be whatever you want, you know, a little smiley face, I don't know, you know, question mark, you know, what, you know, make your own interface, you know, uh, so, um, can have as many queries as you want and then what it does you know and here I'm just printing some text you know but it could run a, an entire block of code no you know uh, and then the trick would be uh, what if you want to make a programming language or something to be able to execute a block of code um, with some variables of your uh, choice in there like if I want to go move th uh, a value uh, into a register, uh, write my own primitive assembly language, you know. All I need is to create a function of some sort that executes the block of code and substitutes the value. Okay, so that's a good start. Um, I made a small buffer. It could be like 256, but you know, just for testing purposes, we're keeping it minimal. So here's the essentials of uh we'll i'll build it from the ground up but some of the those of you that are easily bored can just grab it from my main here um so wait that's new line where where am i here where am i da, 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 da. here we go read int uh let's see uh 16 in hex which is actually int 22 in decimal there, and that will read a, a value, whatever you type, uh, okay? And then um, now that it's in, uh, here we'll basically clear the register, you know, uh, initialize, and then when you call 
this um, it stores it there okay so now uh, that uh, I'm not there it stores it in um, sorry, in AL yeah yeah good and then now that it's in AL all we have to do is specify uh, we can call a print teletype function which will set the um, tell that it's uh, teletype uh, you know before if we were only printing uh, text then we could declare this at the top and then just keep calling this anytime we wanted you know but now we're going to be doing things with ah so we need to call that on the fly from time to time yeah okay so there you go just that will read some data and print it to the screen nice okay and then um as we're doing that we're storing that in uh, a little a string buffer all right uh-huh Dot, dot, dot. We just keep, and then each time we do, it adds one, you know, to the index and just writes to the next place in the string. Once we have that um, uh, all stored, when you once you hit the enter key, uh, this here, this will compare uh, the strings, you know, and if if it's true, then um, it will go ahead and do whatever you told it to, uh, which in our case is to print a response. Uh huh. And the response here, like like I said, this whatever could be any kind of block of code. We're just having it print something to the screen for testing here. Uh, then um, you want to make a new line. And uh, uh, so it, it all doesn't print consecutively on the same line, you know, yeah, before and after. So let's go up here and look at some sample code. Run in that main loop. Read the key. See if it's if uh, keep keep reading. Let's look at read key here for a second. That's all it does. Puts it into. Uh, the value stores it into AL. Compare AL. Is it an entry key? No. If not, keep checking. Uh, so what we're doing, we got this com buffer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to run a comparison. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, when all is said and done. Okay. And then uh, print something. You know. Um, you know to indicate that the computer is alive, you know, you want it to uh, have something there, you know, generally. Store the character, compare them, print the risk, make it do whatever you want after that, you know, okay. And then, um, you call the print string routine, um, Whenever you need to print uh, whatever is in your buffer, yeah. There you go. Call print teletype. Okay, so let's see here now. Like I said, if you are um, calling this print tel print teletype, um, that's going to tell it that. Uh, to use the teletype and then do it basically so it'll do whatever value so um you need to do that if i if i just said here uh in 16 um it wouldn't do it because ah is not loaded yet with the 14 right but once having done that um this just just to minimize code um, I'm, I'm actually wasting a tick here you know what I'm saying? It's it's it, it, if I called that a second time, it would just be writing a h a value into a h, which uses up a tick. You know, so there I slimmed it. Same here. This 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 uh, would be atrocious um, since uh, I'm printing an entire string and each time I'm setting a h a h a h, an extra tick is wasted. So you know, all this could be. Um, Simplified instead by what's in the print teletype here. Move a h fourteen in sixteen. Let me just copy that down here. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, up here when I call the print string, um, 
instead what we want to do is uh, set that one time and then let's see now this has to be called uh, outside of the print string doesn't it um and then dot, 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 keep doing it yeah okay so here's what i'm seeing is wrong this needs to when you call it it needs to jump to here and uh, a loop in there da -da 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 -da. yeah that makes sense okay so sorry i was having a not enough coffee morning I guess um, so therefore this jump should be whatever uh, print mo there okay. and then we will jump to there yeah much more efficient yeah then I'm not calling it. writing into ah over and over and over I'm just writing into it once and then looping the part that is yeah much more efficient let me just give that a run for a moment yeah okay everything's good hey uh, nope mm. yeah okay there yeah so but um my point was there you can kind of rough things out essentially you know, but um, here we're building an operating system, so we're at a very low level. So um, it's mo it's more efficient to count your uh, ticks, you know, uh, as much as possible at this lower level. And if you want to get sloppy uh, up at the higher level, you yeah, know, that's your beeswax, I guess. Okay. So, anyways, there's the whole thing. Um, let me just make sure uh, we're up to check command. Bump. There's your check command. Da, 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 da. Then we go reset buffer display. Uh, there's the guts. We'll, we'll, I'll build this from the ground up. So for those of you that are easily bored, you can just grab it all out of here. But uh -huh. in the next segment uh, here, I'll continue to build this from scratch. So you can just stop here and go on to the next video or whatever you want to do okay you know to get started here's your deluxe minimal um, keyboard driver um, essentially uh, let me strip this down even further you know don't need that um, we'll just take this bit of code here and put it over that bit of code and this bit of code right over that. and then lose all this there you go and there's your deluxe minimal um, keyboard input driver let me save that let's see what we got yeah um, so now I can type stuff if I hit shift I have capital letters um, one two three extended uh, not extended but you know the when you hit shift and hit a number, uh, what I don't have, nothing happens if I hit an F1. Oh, it does actually advance. Um, that's nice. Or arrow keys, anything like that. So that, that's your bare bones um, uh, for uh, uh, essential basic entry if you want to do something quick. I'll do uh, a little bit more advanced driver uh, a couple lessons down the line, I guess. There you go. Um, so that's that. Let me just go back here, then see, uh, put it all into a function, call it. Yeah. So I got my main loop there. It's a little more readable, you know. Um, and then you can do more advanced things. And then, you know, if I want to clear the screen, uh, you all know. Um, I went and closed the window again. What did I do that for? There. There. Uh, cleared the screen and now it accepts input there. And then you could, you know, you have the choice. You know, I can uh, just, just read the keyboard input and do something with it and not print anything out, you know. 
but uh, there, there, bare bones yeah, to get started. One of the viewers on my Commodore 64 tutorial series um, mentioned that he always thought it would be cool if um, at the on the Commodore 64 if you could also enter assembly code yeah you know, uh, as some of you may know the Commodore 64 um, could understand basic you could type commands in basic on the command line and hit enter and they would execute um, so that kind of got me thinking you know about um, well first of all yeah you'd want to um, that would get tedious, uh, printing long lines of uh, assembly. You'd want a way to create uh, macros, you know, uh, groups uh, of assembly and name them. You know, I remember uh, there was a programming language called Scheme that um, allowed you to easily define your own uh, commands on the fly from the command line, you know, so you could take these basic uh, groups of commands that behaved very similar to uh, the way your computer actually works under the hood and then um, define clusters you know uh, run them as a, as a group um, so let's say uh, here I've got a, a program that does some graphics print some stuff to the screen you know and let's say actually here this <laughs> here um, I got this bit here where I just set the screen uh, to 256 color, you know, and set up uh, to point to video memory. And it's something you type all the time, and it's tedious. And I was thinking, okay, um, so what if I could just turn that into a block of code and call it? Well, obviously, one way, you know, let's say you got uh, your program, just wipe everything out here uh, dump there's your clear the screen right um, I could of course uh, turn this into uh, some kind of uh, what label on our you know here whatever and then um, uh, have my block of code, you know, main, whatever, main here. Uh, there, you know, and then um, uh, inside my main just call the label. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm sorry, call. I always forget that. Call my label. All right, and it, and it would jump uh, here. past all of the code that's here. Whatever, there, uh, load all of this. All right, and back to there. All right, uh, so some frequently used code. Uh, anyways, so to make a long story short, what I was considering. Well, let me just take just this bit here. It's just the code I was referring to for a second. Um, I'll just save that. And then um, if I go over here and just uh, 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 NASM it, but not um, launch chemia, uh, there's my binary now. Instead of looking at it, I'll just B tab. Uh, uh, there is the actual. Um, assembly code right yeah so then I could also um, let's see where's my oh, let me back up just a little bit here um, down here just go now DB paste there and comma 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 like that you see no I'm just like pumping that assembly code uh, uh, straight in there you know um, oh 
not assembly code, I'm sorry, M machine code, right? I bypassed assembly. So in other words, there, I'm taking, you know, this, just doing a call. So within my program, my command line program, you know, I could just uh, make it so I could type something, you know, and then it would execute uh, a block of code. I bypassed assembly, you know, I'm just creating my own um, scripting language of, of sorts, you know. And then, like I said, to create a function, maybe I have a, a value here, whatever it may be, you know. I want to do the same bit of code, but I want, instead of it being 12, to be 14, you know. Then if I, all I need is a way to pump that in and specify that, and I have basically the rudiments of my own programming language, right? So, very um, interesting. So, in other words, yeah, here, I can just, boom, there, just do that you know, um, in my program uh, with a keystroke there and and as long, and then execute another block of code with another keystroke and another, you know, and then assemble groups of blocks of key uh, of, uh, of uh, code. Yeah, and there, there, I can um, begin writing uh, code with my very rudimentary operating system and then branch out from there, you know, uh, create various macros and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the next thing to, uh, work on. Yes.